folks! How's everybody doing? Another episode of Rudy Talks to Everybody. Uh, oh, God. Uh. Rudy answers very frequently asked questions. Sit back. Relax. Let me answer some questions that you did not think you asked, but you want to know the answer to. All right. So, uh, these are some good questions today, folks. First things first. Rudy, a couple years back, you mentioned in one of your Q&As your end goal was to eventually have... What's on the back of this? Anything interesting? Okay, just making sure you guys aren't not showing you something weird. That was an old video from 2019. Uh, a couple years ago, Rudy, yes, I mentioned that I wanted to buy a small shopping center and have like a fancy card store, really large in the middle, and then rent out the other units to expand the Alpha Investments brand and image and everything back in oh, 2017, 18, or 19. I don't remember when it was. Uh, is that obviously people want to know, is that still happening? It's been a few years. What's going on? Short answer... No way in hell. Essentially, let me give you the bullet point answers. The fact that I would never want... The landscape has changed as far as renting commercial storefront space in a strip center, commercial rental property. Um, even in Florida here, which is the most like, you know, rich people, defender-friendly, anti-tax, no state taxes. Um, but the fact that the federal government is still allowing people to not have to pay their bills or pay their rent, makes commercial renting and the valuation, and in my eyes, the risk in my comfort zone is no longer in line with what I wanted to do years ago. The fact that there could be stores that are we have to take into consideration with leases and clauses now, where if there's the government states there's a pandemic, or if the government states there's you know an event and you don't have to evict and a business can stay around, I don't want to be the one having a shopping center paying millions of dollars and nobody has to pay their bills, but I still have to pay mine. So to answer your question, no, the fancy Rudy shopping center and having like my unit and having rentals for all the other ones around me for commercial space, that is a hundred percent no go, not going to happen. No way in this lifetime. I mean, the world would have to be completely different, but I just don't see it since 2020 moving forward. You know, obviously, the political landscape, the business world can change, but based on the world of e-commerce, lack of organized play, most people are just kitchen table at home players and they get with their, with their friends, which is fine. But the state of the LGS and the state of renting commercial property, you see, I always viewed commercial property a little different than residential. People have to have a roof over their head. A family has to, has to have a place to go home to. You don't have to have... Rudy's Tacos next to the Alpha Investment Store. You see what I'm saying? So I do not plan on expanding to that location. And I actually had one picked out too. I do not plan on doing that um, because the risk reward is no longer attractive. The extreme cost increase of property taxes, overhead, common area maintenance, uh, just permitting and just the things involved with the cost expenses you know, it's just, and then the idea that the other tenants around that strip or in your strip center around you can not pay and I cannot evict them is a no-go. So that's it. That's the end of the first question. Maybe I'll readdress in the future. Probably not because probably within a couple of years, I'm not going to be on YouTube anyways. But until then, there's no way I would take that kind of risk for a small potential return just to make a flashy store and make some sort of extravagant tourist stop type thing because everybody would want to come to it. It would draw a lot of people, but... The, the I don't see the true long-term benefit anymore, especially with my time horizon and my personal life and where I plan on being. Next thing, Rudy, I've been hearing a lot of things online about uh, your collection, your personal collection. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with this question. All of a sudden, the last week, I've had about 15, 20 random patrons and messages asking, Rudy, is it true you have you were bragging about the size of your collection or this? I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, Rudy, you know, can you disclose the size of your collection? Is it the largest? What do you think the strengths and weaknesses of your collection? I don't know what's going on with this. This must have been a post or a Facebook thing or something that must have come up. Um, I, I do think I'm definitely in the top one percentile for collectible size, for sheer raw value, since it's over, you know, it's over the eight-figure, ten million plus marker. Um, but again, that valuation can swing. Do I think I have the largest collection? Um, by like appraisal or raw dollar amount, probably not. I, I think I'm in the one percentile um, for the, just the sheer volume and how long I've been doing this. But I don't believe there has to be other people out there that are very quiet that has you know because remember, even if I have 
you know, 99 Arabian Night sets. Which I, I'm not at 99, unfortunately. I'm not at 100. Didn't hit my goal. The price went up too much. I stopped buying. I didn't make it to my 100. I got close, but I'm not at 100 Arabian Night sets. But let, there's got to be other people out there who have a substantial position in these things. Because, again, based on print runs, even if one-third of the supply of Arabian Nights is left in the world, and the print... How many possible sets can you even have in Arabian Nights? 20,000 or something? You know, even if there's 20,000 possible sets based on the number of rares or U2s printed instead of U3s, and a third of that exists in 2021, that means there's still, like, what, five, 6,000 complete sets of Arabian Nights? So even if I'm, you know, between 80 and 100 complete sets... I'm not 8 100, but probably around 80s. You know, that's still nowhere near 5,000 possible sets of Arabian Nights. Now, do I believe there's even one-third of the Arabian Night cards left in the world? I don't. I've been very adamant about that recently. I actually don't believe the supply of old cards. I've been very vocal about that. The supply of old sealed boxes, the market is incorrect, and the supply, the true amount of single cards of ABU and Four Horsemen sets, I believe, is truly low. Like when I was talking about the Silver Age boxes after those reserveless era boxes of the 90s, that 99 through 20, 2009 to 2010, that 10, 11 year block, I don't believe the supply is truly factored in. And I believe that to be the same thing with Arabian Nights, Legends, and Antiquities. I do not believe there's 5,000, 8,000 sets of Arabian Nights out there. I just don't believe it. Anyways, so no, answer the question. I do not think I have the largest. I don't know where that came from. Sounds like maybe a troll or something, but I, I, I'm very proud of my collection. It was taking my whole life to get there. I do enjoy it, and I still have no intentions of selling, no intentions of flipping or breaking it down, parting it out. When I retire, I have no intentions of selling it. It's just it's an extension of me, and I'm, I'm truly honored and privileged to have it, and I really appreciate owning that and appreciate the cards. Next thing. Uh, Rudy, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Adventures of Forgotten Realms. Is the weakness in this thing really going to go to zero? Or the rumors of it being cut off of printing early? Is this true? I don't know where that's coming from. There's no true uh, validity or credibility to the new Adventures Forgotten Realm draft set or, well, collectors, there is no more waves or reprints, duh, all collector boxes, you guys, and we've talked about that. Um, no, I don't know of anyone talking about, I don't know why anyone at the higher up levels would be cutting off the D&D products early. Uh, I am not familiar with any truth to that at all. I do not believe that's accurate. Even if there's weaker sales, it is a core set replacement. Even weaker core sets are always readily available for 10 to 13 months. What are we, a month past release? No, I don't know who's coming up with that. I do not believe that's accurate information. Do, is the set selling weekly? Or we, is weekly a word? Is the set showing signs of weakness? Yes, in my opinion, it is showing signs of weakness. Is the set performing the, the same as a core set or better? Yes, it is. Is it performing better than a core set? I do think so. Um, do I think Adventures Forgotten Realms is going to be a bad product once it goes out of print this time next year and we do follow-ups? No, I don't. I actually think it's going to be a great long-term product, especially for sealed product investors and collectors and the evil, attractive, 3% beautiful ladies. Across the board, I think it's going to be a good long-term play. Um, yes, the product's weak. No, I don't recommend. Do not do mass box opening. I wouldn't recommend trying to flip the singles. Um, I... I it rem I told you all in another video. It reminds me of the Theros collector boxes. When even Timmy Rudy in 2020, and I fire sold to my patrons for 159 for Theros collector boxes. That's what the D&D set reminds me of right now. That's I think it's going to have a similar rubber band trajectory of you know tanking, which is where it's done now. It's flatlined, and I think it will rebound the next 12 months. Next, Rudy, what do you think about the uh, Modern Horizons 2? Rudy, when's the uptick coming? Am I going to get a huge free 10 knees and going to go to the moon in Modern Horizons 2? Sealed products and singles in the next couple months. I heard I heard the supplies just start getting tight. Wrong. Whoever's feeding you that crap is trying to sell you extra boxes. If you want to buy extra Modern Horizons 2, at this time I don't have any. Uh, I do hope to get some, though, in the next couple weeks and sell more. I have a lot of patrons wanting more, uh, especially at that sub $200 price point. People were really excited about that. Boy, I didn't realize the demand would go through the roof. Um, Modern Horizons 2, it's, it ex it's, it's a regular standard-shaped booster box. That, um, it's a regular-shaped... Lord of the Rings. It's a regular shaped booster box, and Wizards gets t double the price. Because of that alone, Modern Horizons 2 will be available, just like Modern Horizons 1, for a solid year minimum. So do not FOMO into it. Do not freak out. Don't be paying for a draft box, 240 250 260 anymore, because they have now shown us, now that we have the new data, we didn't have this before, and remember, 
my opinion and the market's opinion does change based on Wizards' actions. So remember that. If you watch different YouTube channels' opinions and my opinions, the opinions vary as data comes out, just like Wall Street. You can hate Apple stock in the 80s because it was only a couple dollars and didn't do crap. It was a terrible investment. But it doesn't, you know, investors and financial analysts who follow the tech sector and Apple and Googs and, you know, Amazons and Netflixes, you know, their opinion will change based on events that change. I do believe Modern Horizons 2 is going to be a home run long-term play once supply tightens up and it goes out of print. We are nowhere near there. So if you're thinking about making quick tendies on Modern Horizons 2, probably flipping the singles is going to be your best bet if you get lucky cracking packs because sealed product prices are going to stay, in my opinion, flat. I don't think they're going to tank. I don't think they're going to go any higher. I think where they are is where they're going to be. Next, Rudy. Uh-oh, flesh and blood question. Everybody watch the thumbs down. Watch the thumbs down. Refresh the video. You're going to see thumbs down. All right, um, flesh and blood. Rudy, I'm hearing, okay, there must be Reddit posts on this or a Facebook, private Facebook group or something. Rudy, I've been reading on message boards. That's got to be a Reddit or a Facebook group or a, a, a new Tinder app or maybe uh, Plenty of Fish. By the way, I got the name of that dating site, Plenty of Fish. For those of you who remember, I was talking about that in another video. I couldn't remember the name. It was some fish dating site, Plenty of Fish. Uh, fab is Fab. I heard rumors. Flesh and blood is an international cryptocurrency money laundering scheme for billionaires that shoot themselves in penis-shaped rockets into space. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. Um, look, you're going to continue to hear all kinds of crazy shenanigans because people are, it's just more fun that way. You know, the reality, I've talked to you all about this on six years on YouTube. The reality of the real world is the truth is more entertaining than trying to make up fake news or coming up with goofy stuff. In the world of collectibles, in many news stories, the actual real world events are more dramatic and gossipy and, and, and very drama and negativity and wow blah. It's, it's more exciting what actually happens than trying to fabricate a fake story. So when you hear these elaborate stories of International crypto money laundering car wash Heisenberg 2.0. It's it's so extravagant. It's silly. Now maybe there's truth to it. I don't know. You know, people still think I'm an underground mole. That I'm actually a cat, and I actually work for Hasbro, and that's why no one sees me in the real world. And people think I actually work for Hasbro. And you know, in my opinion, because Flesh and Blood came out, and it just shook the hornet's nest so dramatically in something that was supposed to fail in something that was supposed to be such a you know flash in the pan and the fact that it didn't take that and it had such an extreme price swing and just dramatic shake of coming from nothing to something it, it's gonna spawn conspiracy theories and I expect that to continue with even like MetaZoo. And I expect that to continue with any other new card games that come out in the next couple years. If it fails, people are going to say, I told you so. If it's successful, people are going to screech and re all kinds of, you know, scam or artificial. You know, there's one box being traded between crypto and money laundering. And one investor is just selling it to the same evil triangle person. You know, who knows. But anyways, yes, I've, been, I've received messages and screenshots. Um, and people copy and pasting these very bizarre things about flesh and blood and you know i guess what makes me laugh about it is you know being from someone who was involved from the very beginning and approached by the company and someone who actually tried to sell the alpha product and i couldn't even sell it all and someone who tried to sell the first edition arcane second release and still couldn't sell it all you know and then had a 10 15 percent return rate of buyer's remorse I can tell you all for a fact, the public image versus what really happened in the last year and a half, there's a very big disconnect of what actually happened. Because even from the beginning, you know, like, I'll never forget when James and LSS, you know, after I told him what happened with the first sale, and James was so nice, he was like, Rudy, you know, hey man, look, I know you couldn't, you couldn't sell all the Welcome to Wraith alpha, alpha boxes. You know, hey, I'll buy it back the ones you didn't sell. I appreciate it. You know, hey, we still sold 70-80%. You know, whatever, like I said, I don't mind giving your money back and you can you can return the dead inventory. Like, he, he was so nice. Like, the guy was so nice to offer to return it. And I said, no, 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 I'll leave it. And, you know, usually there's stragglers and patrons who miss the sale and message and I'll, sell, I'll ship out an extra one, one or two a week. And 
it, it was it was just really funny how the real world and what actually happened versus what the internet thinks. It's just hilarious. Next thing, uh, Rudy, can you comment about the strength of the reserve list and what's going on? Do you think we bottomed? And how do you feel about what's going on with this? Okay. Um, I hate I hate I feel like you jinx yourself when you say the reserve list bottomed or any investment class bottomed. I feel like that's that's like bad taboo. Not a cliche superstitious person, but at the same time, I don't like poking the bear. Um, I actually believe reserve lists, um, overall, I, I think, I, let me, let me word it this way. If you're looking to park money into collectibles, and again, I'm a cat in the basement, seek a licensed advisor who has a real office and is renting a place or working for a company with a fancy business card. Not a guy who can't get afford to get a haircut, you know? Um, in my opinion, if you're someone looking to collect or invest and park money and look at collectibles, the downside risk for reserve lists or sealed product right now is very minimal compared to the upside potential. Similar to cryptocurrency or if you're buying, you know, Bitcoin or BitConnect. BitConnect! Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, it's just so funny. I know there's people out there that lost money on BitConnect. It's just such... Just if you have, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on YouTube, type in BitConnect, and look at the remixes and the songs. Hey, 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 hey. It's just so, it's just, I don't know why that makes me happy, but I do know there are a lot of people who did lose actual money on that scam, but I just, that Carlos guy who did the, the song and they auto tuned it, it's just funny. Anyways, um, the downside risk compared to the upside, the teeter totter is tilted in a way that to me, the reserve list is becoming extremely attractive again. Which is why, remember, if you have vintage cards, sealed product, reserve list, alpha investments, LLC at gmail.com, pictures and prices, love to talk to you, put you on the channel, share your story, you make it legendary, it'll be on YouTube forever. Um, there's some really good videos and really good collections in transit, and uh, excited to share some of those in the next two weeks, should be a lot of fun, folks. Alright, so overall, um, reserve list strength is becoming a thing. It does appear to be correlated to cryptocurrency and the uptick in crypto world. Um, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but it does appear to have some sort of correlation or a very tight beta coefficient, as they say. The beta of crypto and reserve list is starting to appear to be very similar. Um, anyways, uh, last topic on here after that reserve list thing is overall, Rudy, how are you doing? How, how's the fam? How's the little one? How, how's, how's the woman? How's the little kid? Uh, overall... Um, overall mental state and overall, I am really, uh, I'm still truly enjoying it. Um, I, I definitely think there's, there's, um, a little bit lack of passion towards a lot of the new magic products now. Like the new Innistrad set coming over, coming out, you know, in the past, I would have been, I would have been on cloud nine when Shadows of, like when Shadows of Innistrad was coming out, because original OG Innistrad was like one of my favorite sets ever. And, like, there's a third, you know, Return to Return to Innistrad is coming out here in, like, 30, 60 days. And I'm not even that excited about it. And I think that's kind of... I don't know. I don't know what it is. I I, I, gen I have more excitement about a new Weiss set release or the new Force of Will set coming in the month. Or the new Pokemon Evolving Skies and the new anniversary, 25th or 30th anniversary, whatever it is. 25th anniversary, right? Pokemon 99. Yeah, 25th anniversary. You know, that stuff excites me. And to see what like to see what happens with MetaZoo, the new kid on the block that everybody made fun of as as another scam, and you know looks like a bunch of middle school kids did the artwork, and you know the the market's gonna make or break. You know the market makes a decision, and it, I'm I, and again I'm getting very excited as we approach September. You know, the end of September is Tales of Aria, and I'm super pumped to see that more colorful, happy, vibrant theme of Tales of Aria with Flesh and Blood, and to see this whole colorful and the image of, like, a different type of set versus all the doom and gloom of Monarch and evil and death and blood and angels and demons. And, you know, I'm really excited to see how the market's going to accept or reject Tales of Aria after the extreme reactions and boom and the up boom and downtick of the, uh, the Monarch there. Um, yes, I am still buying Monarch. Alpha Investments, LLC at gmail.com. Remember... If you have Monarch cases, $800, four sealed case of Monarch, four boxes, $200 a piece, and I pay your shipping. Take a picture, 
send me an email, still buying. Remember, sell me your sealed first edition flesh and blood product before it goes to zero and the scam runs out and the duck duck goose and you're the last one. So make sure you sell. I'll give you money so you don't have any of that downside risk. Anybody? I'm not getting any more context on that. Prices are going up. Please? Anybody? Okay. Um, but overall, I'm really, mentally, I feel pretty good. I've been enjoying myself and having a good time with the family and the parents and, you know, the old uh, Miss Lindsay and my son and everything. And everything's been, everything's been good. A lot of little family stuff and having fun and doing some little things on the side with family. You know, like little, you know, kind of rollerblading in the little one and, uh, you know, bowling and doing some fun things and soccer and little, a lot of real world stuff. Kind of, you know, go outside and dig a hole and, you know, my six-year-old looks at me and says, Dad, why are you, why are you sitting in a hole in the front yard? I said, son, this is what it's like to be a carrot. Sometimes you view the world from the ground and you just watch. And the key to life, son, is to listen. Not to ramble, not to talk, not to try to get ahead and scam people, but to listen. And you will learn that as time goes on, you know, if you're good at something and you really, it takes 10 years to master something. Have I said that recently? Remember, no matter what you're into, if you haven't done it for 10 years, you're not a master at it. And after 10 years, you get so good at anything in this world and you put that much time into it. And if, you, if you're able to have a good hobby or a good business, the money will come. The passion and the money will connect and take care of itself. So overall, per, things are pretty good. You know, um, a lot of interesting things to see what happens. Obviously, on the macro scale with all these, you know, different variants and viruses and the political and anger and drama continues to be a thing out there and Honestly, I, I'm more, I always, see, I always hear and see that stuff, and I, I find it just disappointing. You know, I feel like an old guy. Like, old man is disappointed. You know? Somebody turn that into a meme. Old man Rudy, disappointed. I feel like that's a good picture for you guys. You know, I, I feel like it's disappointed. You know, see a lot of people wound up and angry and, you know, all that attacks towards different stores or price gouging or, or it's, it's not MSRP or it's below MSRP or above or scalping and you know all that, you know all that stuff that's been going on since the dawn of time and you know I, i'm still pretty optimistic you know i feel pretty good about everything i think there's a lot of good things and a lot of positivity and a lot of good opportunities to make a lot of money and i think the world will continue to march forward because i am just i just believe you know i believe in people i believe in most americans and most people around the world are good people yeah there's a lot of timmies there's a lot of dumb people out there there's a lot of people that make bad mistakes. There's a lot of people that make people look bad. There's people that do dumb things that make certain, you know, races and religions and politics makes people look bad. But that goes with everything, you know? There's always bad people across the board in any concept. You can't generalize anything, but I'm optimistic. I really am, folks. I do believe that overall, I think there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of wealth and a lot of good business and a lot of good things and appreciation between real estate, stocks, and collectibles and I do think there will be some day in next week, next month, or next year that volatility returns. And we see, you know, maybe a 5,000 point drop on the stock market. Or we see uh, real estate cool off before it goes back. And I think that's okay. I don't think there's any room for reason for people to panic or dump everything. But I, I think all this stuff is okay. And I think that's part of marching forward. And I really do feel that people who have a good level head and are optimistic are going to be rewarded. And I think people who are willing to actually work in 2021 in the United States, and really truly put in 100%, it will work out. So I literally, for 99% of people, it usually does work out. And it does work out pretty good. But people who just say, oh, Rudy, I work hard. But it never works out. I get hosed every time. Well, then you may need to reevaluate why or how you're making certain decisions. And then you have to ask yourself, are you really giving 100%? 100%? I work money through Friday. I work 40 hours, Rudy. Are you really giving 100%? Are you, are you honestly given 100%? Remember that. Because if somebody's working a 40-hour job, doing 15, 20 hours a week of actual work, and someone like me still averages 60 to 80 hours a week of actual work, my one regular week that goes by, I'm doing an entire month's worth of productivity, money, and business than someone who's doing an entire month, and I'm doing it in a couple days. Think about that. And that's why some people tend to run faster and get ahead. And I believe the future for people willing to work hard and hustle and really do the right thing, I think that the longer-term wealth and success will be far greater than people who attempt to scam and steal things. I think the, uh, the real money is in the long-term hustle of working hard and the passion. The money will come. The money will come. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for most people watching this channel most people out there. 
I don't think a lot of people believe that. I think a lot of people are very jaded and negative. And I think that's normal. That's part of the rite of passage. And you're supposed to feel that way. And I think as you get through that muck, you'll wake up one day and you'll figure it out.